Could this supplement be one of the most dangerous ways to boost dopamine? In this video, what I'm going to do is take a look at the potential dangers associated with using Macuna prurians as a means of boosting dopamine. So for those of you who are brand new to my channel, my name is Lucas, the founder of Ergogenic Health. And my mission is to bring you the most cutting edge health information that you'll struggle to find on Google. So please do me a favor and like this video as it does help with the YouTube algorithm. So ultimately in today's video, what I'll do is take a look at the consequences associated with using Mucuna prurians as a supplement or a nootropic to boost dopamine. Mucuna prurians is commonly known as velvet bean and has been traditionally used in the traditional Ayurvedic medicine system in India for thousands of years. And if we have a look at the historical applications for this particular herbal medicine, you know, there are very strict and extreme certain scenarios where they would actually deploy Macuna prurians as a medicine to treat various types of diseases. Now, what we're seeing today is a lot of people are leaning towards Macuna prurians as a way to boost dopamine. And what I'm here to show you are the potential dangers associated with doing so. So why is Macuna Purian so dangerous to boost dopamine? Well, it all comes back to the simple pathway associated with the production or the synthesis of dopamine. One thing to bear in mind is that dopamine formation actually starts from the very beginning substrate of L-phenylalanine, which you can see at the top of this uh, diagram. Now, L-phenylalanine is an essential amino acid, which means that we find this in protein rich foods. From phenylalanine it then gets converted into tyrosine and this is via phenylalanine hydroxylase. Then from tyrosine you can see it goes to dopa via tyrosine hydroxylase and then aromatic amino acid decarboxylase which eventually converts dopa into our substrate our favorite dopamine. Also factor in that dopamine can then go down other sequences and different pathways to eventually norepinephrine and epinephrine. And so my whole premise here is around the dangers associated with using Macuna in this sort of uh, context. Because Macuna prurians is so rich in L-dopa, it's a naturally occurring source of L-dopa, it contains L-dopa. By substituting or I guess supplementing the brain with pure L-dopa, we're bypassing two critical enzymes, phenylalanine hydroxylase and tyrosine hydroxylase. And so by bypassing these critical enzymes, it's almost like nuking or just, you know, a suicidal way to release dopamine or to accumulate dopamine in the brain. So what ends up happening is that it sort of down regulates the production of these critical enzymes so you could imagine what would happen when you withdraw from Macuna prurians. And that brings me on to my second point is whether or not Macuna prurians can actually be used as a supplement. Now, my stance here is that Macuna prurians can be used as a supplement to you know, provide a boost. However, we wanna be using it very sparingly and we, we must avoid those supplements that are standardized above 15% L-DOPA. So many supplements are either standardized to say 20%, 25%, even 30% L-DOPA, or even sometimes 99%, which is essentially pharmaceutical grade L-DOPA. In this situation, we really wanna be using this sparingly, maybe once every two weeks, or maybe once a month or so in acute or crisis situations when you really need a lift. But to be honest, it's definitely not one we wanna be using on a day-to-day -day basis, purely based on the fact that once we withdraw from like administration of Macuna, generally speaking, there is a massive state of withdrawal that occurs. And in fact, we operate in a very dopamine deficient state when we withdraw Macuna prurians after long-term usage. There are many people, including myself, who have experimented with this and tested it out and noted you know, feeling very, very depleted and very, very flat the day or days after withdrawing from Macuna prurians. If you take a step back and sort of identify what you think would occur if you did use pure L-DOPA, I mean, if we're gonna be providing the brain with 
the easiest way to convert it into dopamine. You would think that it's, you know, one of the best strategies to do so. However, what we're missing out on is, you know, some of the critical enzymes leading up to dopamine synthesis, which is why, you know, we see various threads online of, you know, guys and girls using macunapurians and noting that they feel very drained and depleted following uh, Macunapurian's withdrawal. I also wanted to share this pretty interesting fact going beyond L-DOPA. So as I mentioned at the start of this video, L-DOPA is one of the many constituents found within Macunapurians. And what I want to present is actually this study here, which was really fascinating. The study was titled Levodopa or L-DOPA reduced Macunapurian seed extract shows neuroprotective effects against Parkinson's disease in murine microglia and human neuroblastoma cells, K. neurobates elegans, that's one hell of a hard name to pronounce, and Drosophila melanogaster. Now, ignoring that second bit of the, the title, what I want to note here is it's really interesting to see that Macunapurians is neuroprotective even without L-DOPA and is even you know beneficial in Parkinson's disease without L-DOPA. So this goes to show you that there are many other constituents that are found within Macunapurians as a herb and it doesn't always just come down to L-DOPA. Perhaps there's other compounds that can help to you know support dopamine synthesis or help with you know, preserving dopamine neurons. So this is really, really fascinating research and it goes to show us that we, you know, need to factor in other components within these herbs, that it's not just one single isolate when it comes to treating various diseases. So obviously you're probably wondering now some other alternatives to Macuna Purians. If you haven't already checked out my video, I'll leave a card up here where I talk about the supra physiological dopamine stack. I put together this particular stack to, you know, boost dopamine. And again, if you want to know more about various nootropic stacks or you want a customized nootropic stack, please do check out the links in my video description where, you know, I've started formulating personalized and customized nootropic stacks for people based on their particular goals. Just a recap of this you know, the super physiological dopamine stack. We had TTFD at a dosage of 50 milligrams, 9MBC at five milligrams, Bromantane at 25 milligrams, Cordyceps extract at 500 milligrams, and L-phenylalanine at 1000 milligrams, and then Babchi seeds, about two to three seeds chewed. If you wanna learn more about that stack, do check out my other video. So hopefully you learned something new in this video and hopefully it you know gives you some insight into some of the potential dangers associated with using Macunapurians to boost dopamine. This is not to fully discredit the benefits of Macuna. I mean, there are many studies demonstrating you know positive effects on testosterone, positive effects on reducing prolactin, positive effects on mood states, but what I want to highlight are the potential downfalls associated with using Macuna Purians for a prolonged period. So thanks everyone for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.